Hello everyone, welcome back to Spar and Brawl. Hope you're having a good day. As always, I'm joined by my co-host Sam, and we're gonna do another latest update as it concerns Iran and the nuclear deal. So this video will have a bunch of stories in it, including reports that China has been unofficially buying oil from Iran the past few months or year. Something like that, but Sam will share all the details with us. So Sam, please go ahead. The floor is all yours. Yeah, oh, thank you. Well, we had quite a few developments. We had a uh, Mohsen Rezaei, who people may know because he's a he was a former uh, presidential candidate in a number of Iranian elections. He's famous for running for presidential election every uh, for presidential uh, position every time. He uh, did an interview with Financial Times, and he's a former commander of the SEPA. He was uh, uh, during the war, so he's one of the original guys. And in that interview, he said that Iran is willing to come back to the negotiation table if the U.S. agrees to lift sanctions within a year. This was quickly rebuked by the foreign minister Zarif, who said that uh, this is not Iran's official position and, and no, we need action much faster. And following that, Rouhani spoke and he said that Iran will act immediately after uh, it sees some signals from U.S., for example, lifting of sanctions or coming back to the deal or, you know, a combination of both or com parts of each, right? So Iran is keep basically giving signal that it needs an action or some actions from um, U.S. government to, you know, restart negotiations. So, and on the other side, we are seeing, it seems we are seeing some actions because uh, uh, Reuters reported that uh, data shows that during the last few months, India and China have uh, very quietly increased their oil purchases from Iran. They've, um, uh, India pretty much stopped buying oil from Iran uh, uh, during the Trump years and the maximum pressure campaign of Trump. India pretty much stopped buying oil from Iran. China never stopped. In fact, during the last 14 months, they've been buying 300 uh, 300,000 uh, barrels per day on average, I think, and uh, it's been increasing. And 75% uh, of that has been unofficially under through, you know, they put a flag of a different nation like Oman or Malaysia or Emirat or something, and they smuggle it that way. So the, uh, you know, international authorities or, you know, that American authorities, they're not notified. And there are reports both from India and Iran's um, national oil company that uh, India is planning to buy buy oil from Iran, and they are actually setting aside an amount of money in the budget for next year that is going to be dedicated to buying oil from Iran. However, the reports also say that they are waiting for Iranian elections this summer. They are waiting to see the results of that, and after that, they are probably going to sign contracts or sign deals. Uh, with Iran. So there, I, I doubt and many analysts doubt that these um, increase in oil purchases would have gone ahead without America giving a green light to India at least. China, maybe not. But, you know, there seems to be Americans are easing tensions. There is also talks that the Iran's money that's been stuck in Korea and some of Iran's money that's been stuck in Iraq are being released like a couple of billions of dollars that we talked about in our previous videos if you want uh, to know like more details about that check those videos out <laughs> about uh, iran has about seven billion dollar for example is stuck in south korea a couple of billions in iraq you know uh, oil money that can't be transferred because of banking sanctions of us so that was uh, these are some let's say positive development in terms of for diplomacy at least on the other hand uh, I mean, any? do you have any questions, anything on, on this? No, no, no questions so far. Just keep on going, please, and then maybe at the end, can have a little All check. right. So, yeah, we also had uh, the other side, basically. U.S. had a military exercise. They, um, uh, they flew jet-powered long-range bombers over the Middle East. Apparently, they are called the Strato Fortresses. So I would imagine they are some kind of defensive um, air capability and uh, in this uh, military exercise at different points during the military exercise so probably not at the same time they were accompanied by israeli saudi and qatari forces 
And as, uh, there were apparently Israeli F-15s and Saudi F-15s also involved in this exercise. The reports I read, there is no, they are very sh uh, short on detail and there is no clear information whether there was direct coordination between Israelis and Saudis and Qataris or not in this military exercise or at least, um, or, you know, uh, any form of communication because these countries officially don't have any diplomatic ties uh, still. I mean, UAE and um, uh, UAE and Bahrain are different, but Saudi and Qatar still don't have um, any uh, relations with Israel. And this is the fourth time that U.S. has uh, flown jet power long range bombers uh, over Middle East this year. And most analysts obviously view this as a sort of a show of force against Iran that, you know, in terms of military capabilities and military power. Very, very interesting. And everyone, please make sure to like and subscribe. But Sam, how come UAE was left out of this party? Or did you also mention the UAE? Uh, no, no, they, uh, I, I, I didn't read their name in the reports. They didn't get an invite? It, you know, uh, well, I don't know why, but, you know, they, you know, they, you know. oh, uh, I forgot to mention this, by the way. Uh, talking about elections, uh, I mentioned that Indians have said that um, they're going to, um, they, they are willing to probably sign a contract with Iran uh, after the Iranian elections this summer. And there was a report that the uh, commander of the one of the most more famous what do you say bases or military organizations in Iran Khatam al Anbiya he resigned and he said he's resigning to run for the presidency and the military advisor to the supreme leader yesterday did an interview in which he said that there is no um, there is no uh, law against military people with military background running for political office because that's always been a massive debate in Iran that whether military people should be allowed to ho hold uh, political positions and uh, it has happened before Mohsen Rezaei who I mentioned was a military man but usually they left the five-year ten-year gap and they started wearing civilian clothes uh, for many years before they ran for political positions but this time around uh, they are, uh, this is very immediate, you know, the elections are in less than six months. So, the, you know, uh, people are raising concerns, but the military advisor to Supreme Leader said that the only thing that law prohibits is uh, involvement of a person as a part of a military organization. In the worst scenario, he said worst case scenario could be a coup d'etat, best case scenario could be somebody using military ties to help him win an election. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, as we said in previous videos, which uh, if people want to check them out, you know, there are more details about conservatives and in Iran on, in those. Um, this time around, it seems conservatives are going to win the election. And this may have boldened um, even people with military background to um, be more bold in their presidential campaign. But, you know, we'll see, we'll see. There, there seems to be, on the conservative side, this time around, the problem seems to be largely that there are too many candidates. Mm. But, yeah, I was going to say, as we get closer, we'll do more videos on the Iranian election. But last time when we did that, <coughs> there weren't that many candidates. But Or now you're saying they're just a bunch of candidates fighting over oh. the conservative spot. Or like, uh, is it, is no is it like a primary no... kind of thing? Like an no, official no, no. primary but... or... No, no, there is no such thing as primaries or, to be honest, political parties really mm -hmm. in Iran. But <clears throat> there are, you know, basically people with certain I ideological mm -hmm. leanings. And there, officially there are very few candidates uh, still, but there are many people unofficially talked about and most of them are conservatives. Yeah. You know, even Ali Motahari, who, is a, who was somebody who was very critical of many things that reformists are also critical of, he describes himself as a conservative, just the more traditional version of conservatives. So this time around, so far, I haven't seen any major reformist candidates. Uh, all, everybody who's been talked about or who officially has come out uh, has been a conservative, pretty much. But, yeah, but, but so things should get, I mean, between the US and Iran, I mean, some kind of deal or more serious talks or something will have to happen, right? By this, given that there's this election in three months, right? Might it maybe speed everything up until then? Will all parties feel the pressure to make something happen? Well, 
that that was the hope originally, especially I, I mentioned that a couple of other videos that Dominic Rapp said, for example, British Foreign Minister that U.S. has until the Iranian elections to mm-hmm. do to go back to the deal. So you know that was the hope initially, but Biden administration lack of action and Wendy Sherman's. Um, Wendy Sherman saying that, you know, we can't go back to the deal and Europeans hardening their position. All of these are very bad signals. Yeah. But at the same time, you have positive signals like the release of certain funds and, you know, uh, by uh, the administration uh, at least offering to negotiate with Iran better than what, what it was like during Trump years. But yeah, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. I, I Sadly, I think both sides now may prefer to wait for Iranian elections to happen and see what happens then. Because this could be a good issue for opposition parties to bring people out. But okay, and then I just had one last question actually on the Iran nuclear deal. I don't know if you heard about this or if it's not a big deal, but was there some kind of Irish politician who visited Iran in the past oh, week yeah, yeah. about the nuclear deal? I saw that. That was a, sorry, yeah, I didn't really focus on that. But yeah, there was an Irish foreign minister visited Iran who he was basically present. He was basically being acting as a mediator between the Western powers and Iran. And the talks seemed to have been very positive and constructive. Um, another positive sign of, for example, um, between Iran-US relations. Uh, so yeah, no, that was a very positive talk. It's just, other stuff happened since then so i yeah i didn't cover yeah. that no okay all right very very interesting so did we go over everything we had planned on iran for this video yeah i think so yeah pretty yeah. much <laughs> okay no very nice interesting stuff and i mean iran should become more and more of a hot topic i assume in the next in the next few months i mean the elections are in june right and that's really not <clears> far <throat> away that's three months yeah exactly it's gonna be yeah yeah, um, <clears throat> sadly, yeah, I don't think, uh, to be honest, I think, yeah, we're going to, I don't think in terms of real change, we're going to see very little in the next eight, three months. That's my gut feeling, though. Yeah. It's not a, based on any hard evidence. Are the presidential candidates looking for the perfect VP at the moment <laughs> in <laughs> order to hit all the <laughs> social <laughs> racial uh, uh, categories uh, needed? <laughs> No, not really, no. VP is not a big deal in Iran. So, yeah. They're not looking for yeah. someone who couldn't even make it out of the primaries <laughs> to be wise. <laughs> okay. Okay, you're the, you were I'm... the least popular person. Yeah, come, come. <laughs> we, 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 it's more like, you know, they usually give them a... They give their... Uh, the people who are... Their, oppo- their potential opponents are promised cabinet positions okay. or heads of certain institutions. That's it. Okay, nice. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Sam. Please, everyone, like and subscribe if you like this content and you want to see more updates on Iran, Middle East, and other political issues. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in our next video. Thank you. Thank you.